Welcome to Tech Notice. So, Adobe Lightroom. In this video, you're going to be finding out what is the best CPU for Adobe Lightroom, what is the best bang for buck CPU for Adobe Lightroom, should you go with AMD or Intel, and what is the best upgrade path to go for. Let's find out. So this video is for photographers who use Lightroom. Now, if you do use Photoshop as well, make sure you stay tuned and hit that subscribe button because that video is coming out very, very soon. Now, a few things I do want to mention before we're going to go into the analysis and I'll show you some of the CPU scores and tests. I want to say, first of all, big thanks to Puget Systems who actually has done all this testing themselves. I unfortunately have a small channel and I don't have all this bank of processes to test them, but they have done it and they're absolutely fantastic. So if you are from the United States, make sure you check out their page because they produce some absolutely amazing amazing custom built PCs for workstations and you know creative uses and all other cases. So if you want to see the original links and articles I'll leave them in the description. Next of all the links for these processes that I'm mentioning here I'll also leave in the description below. So if you want to build any of them systems feel free to check out any of my build guides on my channel just pick one of those processes put in there depends which one you like and then there you go. What about all the things that are going to be released this year like Intel Tension and you know Ryzen or AMD whatever they come up with. I think we don't need to worry about that. Let this year plan out how it's going to go and we don't know whatever is going to be released when is that stock going to be available because we're still waiting for the stock from last year. You know whatever has been released 2020 take the best out of that one and then use it this year 2021 and let the companies release whatever they release in this year and then you'll see if it's worth upgrading in 2022 if that makes sense so adobe lightroom there is two main things you i want to mention before adobe lightroom kind of has two separate tasks passive tasks and active tasks so if you're not familiar with that then passive tasks are like exporting once you have already you know edited all your photos and put all the effects down then you press export them all and then it's going to make the raw photos into jpegs or any other folder that is passive task the active tasks are when you are clicking between the modules like library development or any other one of these that is active tasks as well as using your brush and putting your presets on, you know, changing all the faders between all the lights and colors, that is active tasks. Different parts of processes have been used when doing these to different tasks. Active tasks is meant for single core use. So Lightroom uses a lot of single core or very slightly threaded is a very technical term how to say that. So basically the better the processor single core performance is, the better it does active tasks. Like, you know, scrolling through images, putting effects on, switching between tabs like library and development, things like that. The more cores there is, the more threads there is, most likely or most of the cases, then the better the processor is in passive tasks. And as you can see over here, I've got some analysis over here on the top left on this side, you can see that there is some processes and their prices. Now this is so you can see constantly what prices are there and what, how much they cost. Which one should you go for, AMD or Intel? Now AMD, as you can see, this is the overall score. AMD processors are red and Intel processors are blue over here. The thing is, AMD processors, not all of these, but all of the processes on this left side on the price listing over here, the ones that are the same color are in the same platform. So you can upgrade the processor within the same platform. For example, Intel here has this light blue and dark blue. They are different platforms. One is like a X platform and then one is a K platform. They're not actually called that, but the processes end like that. So it's easier for you to understand. And both of these two platforms use actually a different processor, even though they look the same kind of processors, you can't mix and match them. Whereas AMD, for example, this bottom one over here, Ryzen 3600 XD, all the way to this top 5900 XD, you can mix and match those processors. So if you want to upgrade from here to the top, you can do. Whereas on the Intel, you can upgrade from here all the way to there and from here all the way to there if that makes sense and then Threadripper on the top is completely another league of things. In that case it is better to go with AMD and even the price to performance ratio is better at AMD because AMD for the same price roughly uh, similar processors beats Intel quite a bit. So as you can see over here I've got the stats chart over here 
of AMD Ryzen 5000 series versus Intel. You can see the different price points over here. We are beating Intel at 11%, 14%, 30% and 25% as you can see over here and these processors are roughly similarly priced so I don't see why you should go with Intel there's nothing really to tempt you from the Intel side even Thunder Thunderbolt 3 port if there's some photographers you know you're using some Thunderbolt drives or external hard drives or external enclosures or NAS that you need to use Thunderbolt 3 Gigabyte has this board called Gigabyte B550 Vision D board uh, you can check out a video or a little conclusion on my channel over there but basically this board supports fully without any glitches the Thunderbolt 3 now there are some other boards that also advertise and feature Thunderbolt 3 but according to Puget systems which they're like the most reliable testers guys you know they they test a lot of things they haven't found anything else that is kind of as reliable as the b550 vision d board so definitely worth checking that out i'll leave a link for that in the description as well if you want to check that out ryzen 5000 series versus 3000 series uh, this is a little bit more technical now if you guys want to just check out the conclusion just jump to the conclusion on the charts on the bottom over there you can see on the youtube chapters ryzen 3000 series and 5000 series there is actually a measurable increase in performance in Lightroom Classic because the single core performance on the new 5000 series processors has been massively increased. So in the same kind of price range we're getting 8, 12, 7, 7% 7 increase which you know only us the creatives are benefiting from. So let's start looking at some of these scores over here. Now this is overall score and we're going to come back to this in a moment but I want to show you some of the other scores first. For example, active score. So active score, like I mentioned before, is the score where we're basically using all the tools and we're working on it. Not just exporting, but we're working on it. That's like active. So as you can see from this 10600K, like a line from here, basically, all the way to the top over here, there is about 4.5% over here. So there's not that much of a difference in the actual active score, but as you can do, or let's dive a little bit deeper, right? So this 5600X and Intel 10600K, this AMD Ryzen is slightly more expensive. As you can see, like maybe 30 more dollars more expensive this. But then the Intel's bottom to the top system, you are upgrading maybe a few percentage from the bottom to the top. Whereas on the AMD from the bottom to the top, there is much more of a jump, especially if we go to the passive tasks in a moment and overall score. But I just want to show you this active score first because if you're doing a lot of you know working on your tools working on your photos then you might want to pick up something here the top ones obviously are Ryzen processors over here they're all from the same platform so you can mix and match them but then Intel is not far be behind even if you want to choose the Intel 1000K because of the shortage of uh, stock in the world at the moment, you're not actually going to lose too much from a Ryzen. So definitely an option worth considering if Intel drops its prices and if it is in stock. I personally think you should still be looking into the Ryzen system just because the system is more kind of capable of upgrading and even if you you know make a bit more dough with your photography business you can upgrade it to a better system and then you know get even better performance basically and then we're going to look into the passive performance over here as well and then the passive performance you can see that the thread ripper processors which have much more cores and threads are performing a big jump better than the top one of the Ryzen 9 over here 5900X. So basically if you are doing a lot of exporting photos uh, and your workflow is just exporting buttloads of photos all the time and maybe your presets have been constantly saved and you don't need to do so much active work the Threadripper processor 24 core over here is absolutely on top of the charts and look how much better it is. There's a solid 20 plus percent better which is a big 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 leap over there. There's even 30 plus percent I think yeah even 30% between here and then the Ryzen's over here perform quite a bit but even this uh, 12 core is performing quite well the 5900x over here is performing quite well 
above this uh, previous one over here there's like seven points between here whereas only here this is like what two points two points between the these two and six points between here so there is a jump between this 5900x which you're going to see in a moment that is a very very solid processor that i would be getting so now let's look at the overall score as you can see our intel is down here and that is combined the passive and active score so it's probably like the best way of kind of looking at the scores to putting them two together so if you're doing you know 50 50 of both that will give you the best performance for in the both worlds so as you can see intel 10900k performs similar than the 80 3800 xt which is 3800 x there is not that big of a difference between these two there is only a few percentage difference but the between the 3000 and 5000 series there is quite a big of a leap over here as you can see 12 percent that one is down here right and then we have like bunch of processes here and then there is this one over here this is the overall score and i'm gonna put my conclusion next to it so you can see what you should be getting or what i would be getting if i was you if i was be doing this this is what i would be getting so the actual starting point what which processor would i be getting is the ryzen 5600x that is over here now you can go for something lower as well and start from some lower processors or even ryzen you know there is 3600x 3800x 3700x or even 2000 series ryzen processors but if you want to know how do these perform in lightroom passive or active tasks then i recommend you doing this check out what are the um, active or passive scores that i just showed you in a moment ago and then compare them to the cinebench r23 multi-core and single core speeds over here so the multi-core is basically the passive tasks and if you have the single core over here then that is the active tasks as you can see the 5900x and 5800x and 5950x on the passive score they were on top of the pass uh, active score tasks over there because their single core is absolutely fantastic on top of the you know world over here so if you want to look for something further down here like a ryzen you know 3300x single core then compare that score to uh, ryzen 3800 xd or 3600 xd for example and then you'll see the difference how much better or worse it would kind of be in the passive tasks or active tasks uh, relatively in lightroom does that make sense because that kind of represents how the processors perform roughly in that ballpark now that is not as accurate because you really get the accurate measurement when you really just test it on the program but i have seen that this is accurate way of looking what it would getting in the ballpark but this 5600x is like a entry model it costs 300 dollars not too much to get started you know obviously there's lower options over there but as you can see even the lowest of amd 5000 series which is how much cheaper of the 10900k look at that another 190 almost 200 dollars cheaper than the 10900k and it outperforms the 10900k obviously like i mentioned it's not a lot over there especially it at active tasks and remember the stock if stock is not available you might want to consider intel but if you get the 10900k there is nowhere to upgrade that is it that's your maximum what you can upgrade and where would i upgrade next then now next of all the upgrade would go to this ryzen 5800x which is an 8 core and now this is what i'm saying very slightly if you can i would straight away jump to the ryzen 5900x to number three in the position and i'm going to tell you why but before that you see that the ryzen 5800x is roughly 10 percent better than our 5600x which is down here the six core down here 10 percent better which is quite a big of a leap and not too bad of a price difference as you can see only 150 dollars or so but the thing is i have found that the 5800x is running really really hot so if you want a bit quieter pc and you know maybe cheaper cooling then the 5800x is not the best option because it just likes to run very hot now this is not that big of a problem if you're doing a lot of active tasks because you're only using a few of the cores in the processor and it's not going to be that hot but when you're doing exporting or maxing out the the processor in exporting tasks or very cpu heavy tasks 
then it's going to be very loud and it might be even slower because it's just thermal throttles itself down to keep the temperatures lower now this is engineered that way and i don't know it's just like a little quirk that people should be knowing when doing this if you can jump straight to the 5900x it's another 250 dollars but you're gonna get about 16.6 percent increase and that is quite a bit look we're going from here to all the way here and that is kind of the maximum i would be going for for most of the people because in active tasks this 5900x as you can see it remember is right on the top over there next to the 5800x so if you're doing a lot of active tasks the 5800x actually kind of makes sense because you're not using all of the cores and it is the best in Lightroom that processor is the best but just bear in mind if you're doing a lot of exporting that processor might run a little bit hot and can compromise performance at least in my experience so that 5900x is the maximum I would be going for because it's the best in its price class so the best bang for buck let's take the overheating out of the system would be the 5800x now if you want the best bang for buck pro processor i would go for the 5900x because it is seriously on top there and you're getting a lot more performance than the 5600x you know you decide whether you're going to do it or not but if you're doing it professionally you just you know consider can i spend this much more every day you know because if it's doing the work faster i can work more or i'm earning more or quicker if that makes sense so the 5900x is like the sweet spot where going beyond it kind of doesn't make sense and you know going below it kind of makes sense but that is like the ceiling or like the sweet spot where you don't want to spend any more than that for example the 5950x 16 core processor which is what well, another 250 dollars more expensive actually performs less and you can see easily here this 16 core, core processor which just costs four grand on its own is only a little bit better but i wouldn't go with neither of these processors next the 32 core or none of the 64 core but this 24 core on top there and that is mostly because the passive task of exporting things is so much better and the overall score increase that you're going to get with that processor would be roughly around 17 percent compared to 5900x that's the conclusion of like upgrade path i would go for bear in mind that this is all the first three are the same platform and the fourth one is on a different platform so if you're gonna choose to upgrade from the third position to the fourth position then there is actually a difference in platform which means new motherboards new ram new cpu and that's all gonna cost a lot lot more so if you're gonna go with the fourth option it's worth going with it straight away from the beginning not upgrading from 5900x if that makes sense so now you know which processor is the best bang for buck which is the best cpu in passive and active tasks which processor is the best upgrade option to go for and if you should be going with amd or intel if you enjoyed this video hit that like button it actually makes a difference subscribe if you haven't already if you want me to cover any other programs let me know in the comment section below and i'll see you very soon thanks guys for watching